वेलकम टू द थर्ड एपिसोड ऑफ गूंज द मार्क ऑफ ब्यूटी द ईयर वॉज नाइनटीन पॉलिटिकल एनलिस्ट एंड जर्नलिस्ट वॉज स्क्रीमिंग एंड क्राइंग but all of their words had fallen on deaf ears there was an uneasy feeling all over the country and calcutta our dear calcutta was burning it was burning in philosophy and politics it was what looked like a revolution to everyone every single one except my devendra my darling my beloved my everything devendra hi I'm Devendra, but you can call me Dave if you like. Hi, English honors. Ooh, you're the serious kind, aren't you? Yes, serious. Why? A girl can't be. Oh no! What? But where's the line is from? Assam. Oh well, Assam. On that note, I make a great cup of tea. One thing led to another, and before we knew it, we were in love. Time passed and we grew together those 3 years became mature started understanding the responsibilities we had taken upon ourselves but somewhere in the back of our minds we knew we were in too deep we knew we had entangled ourselves in a net a web a chain that we would not be able to break out of and more than breaking out it was the fact that we did not want to that made everything even tougher Madhushmita you are the only one that I want You know once in our lives once in our lives we find someone someone who can turn our worlds upside down bring us up when we are feeling down and I think I've ended my search because I don't want to search anymore I don't want to say these same words these same words to anyone else nobody and nothing in this world can change what you mean to me Dave I love you and I never thought we'd be in this situation I never wanted this to come to an end like this. So so let's not end this now please because I cannot. We have to Dave. I've troubled my parents as it is. This is one But, thing I had promised them. Antushmita please. What trouble? These are modern times and you are one with great talents and intellect. So please Please what Dave? I cannot. You know this, we know this. We have known this from the past 3 years. Don't make it harder than it already is. Antushmita. Antushmita I believe in us. I believe in us and nothing else in the world could ever mean so much. Yes, and it is second to none. I know there is nothing that can ever take its place. And you know I really love you and for all our lives you know I always will be Will be, be what? Will be next to me. Huh? Is that what you were going to say? Because don't lie, don't lie and make this beautiful thing that we have corrupted. Don't corrupt this. Because I'll tell you one thing, Madhushmita. I am ready. I'm ready to be next to you Madhushmita from now forever. I cannot imagine the thought of you next to someone else. So please, please understand what I'm trying to tell you. I don't quite remember what happened next. Or I do actually, I just could never bring myself to believe what happened. We were in the room, Dave's room. He started crying at that point and everything was just it was so heated. So I went close to him. He was sitting on that dusty sofa in his apartment. He always sat in. And I walked up to him and said, "Dave, maybe not in this life, not until we live and breathe in these bodies, in another life, in another era." And he crying said, "Madhu Smita, Madhu, I love you. I love you too, Dave." <laughs> The sound of the knife still rings in my head. The sound of my skin tearing, the burning sensation when the knife is pulled back out, the body spitting out the warm blood which then mixes with the dry dusty floor. The fear of the knife going back at you, all the pain and you at that moment thinking, what is happening? 
Why is he doing this? Please stop. Please stop. I know it's confusing. You must have thought this would turn out differently. Even I did. You thought I'd be alive telling you the story, huh? Even I did. I wish I could. <laughs> if not in this life, Mother Shmita, if not in these bodies, then in another. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mother Shmita, but you, you were the one, Mother Shmita. You were the one. You were the one. And how how could I just let you go? Huh? Just just let you go and live with someone else? How could I? How? <laughs> I can't I can't bear the thought of someone else holding you tight, moving his fingers through your head, telling you that he loves you. Because I do. I love you and you belong to me now. Yes. Only me. No, nobody can take this moment away from me. <laughs> You, you don't need to go anywhere. You can be right here next to me, always, for our entire lives. Yes. Hey, Madhushmita. Madhu, Madhu, why aren't you saying anything? Oh, oh what? Huh? Oh, you want to stay here with me? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happens after this was beyond redemption. My calm, cool, sweet Dev became an angry, fidgety, restless, and, and a hot-headed man. Anything that would be slow, anything that would test his patience would burn his skin under. He was irrational and erratic to describe him best. He looked like he had shocks in the middle of the night. He started waking up midnight and sitting on that sofa, he killed me in. Many nights he would sit there smoking his beeries, and, and looking out of that window at the dim street lights outside. Everything about Dev had become unpredictable. He had no routine, he had no plan. He was as unorganized as he behaved and, and nobody would know what he'd say next. Madhu? Madhu? Madhu, where are you? Madhu, come back. Madhu, come back, please. Please forgive me for the sins I've committed, Madhu. Dave? Madhu? Dave, it's all right. Madhu? Shh. Dave, it's okay. Madhu, Madhu why, why, why did I have to take something that I could not give back? Why did I have to do? Why did I have to do what I did, Madhu? Dev, please, it's okay. Madhu, calm down. Madhu, Shmita. Dev. Madhu. Madhu. He couldn't hear me. I was helpless and hopeless. Strange feeling, this. This love that brought us together also tore us apart. The love that once was the reason that would keep us alive had, had become a weapon of murder. He said that he was ready to be next to me. Now it was the other way around. The first six months there was a storm in his head. I could see it. I could feel it. There was the sound of the whistling winds that followed him wherever he went. There was chaos and confusion but, but most of all there was a lonely man. A scared man. She's dead. She's alive. 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 He would shiver in the hot October winds. He would sweat in the cold Calcutta winters. He would scream and he would cry and then, and then he would laugh. He had become the monster he was so afraid of. Months passed and then a year. I saw him start leaving his apartment slowly. The man who had no routine suddenly started to have one. And this routine would change in six months. I couldn't understand what really was happening. I couldn't understand what my Dave was up to until, until he committed it again. Another woman, another pool of blood, and again, and again, and again. Where is it? Huh? Where is it? Where is the birthmark, Madhushmita? Madhu? Madhu, where is it? Where is it? He marked them, he followed them, understood them, and like a predator, went after them in the dead darkness of night. I realized there was something common between these women. I felt as if I had seen them before. 
Did I know them? No. Did they know me? No. And then it dawned on me. They look like me. They dress like me. Where are you? Where are you? Why don't you come? Where is where is it that you're hiding? Huh? Where are you? Come, 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 come Madhu. Let, let's 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 talk about politics. Let's let's talk about the emergency. Let's talk about the communists, Sanjay Gandhi, whatever it is that you want to talk about. I just want to talk to you, Madhu. 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 He went on and on and on. Stabbings after stabbings, deaths after deaths, and he didn't even know their names. All he saw was them, not their lives, not their families, only them. He'd know exactly where to kill them, and then, and then he'd strip their clothes for a mark, for my birthmark. I tried many times to talk to him, I really did, but he was lost. He was lost as much as I was from the world. Where, where, where is it? Where is it, Madhu? Where is the mark of beauty, Madhu? I, I knew you never liked it. Did you take it off? Huh? Oh, oh wow. You, you, you took it off, didn't you? <laughs> you took it off. Two years had passed and my Devendra was no longer a man. He was a stone-cold killer. He had become an animal. Even that sounds less to describe a man like him. He sat on the right aisle of the tram quietly. His face was covered by his long rough beard. The little exposed skin on his face shone under the orange hue of the light. The slow movement of the tram usually made him fidgety and uneasy, but, but not today. Not today, because it was that day again. The day he regained his smile and the glitter in his eyes he'd lost two years ago. Her hair checked, pink ribbon, just like Matashmata. Skin is brown. She's even wearing red lipstick. Not a single sound apart from her breathing, her footsteps, her bangles clinging against each other. Not a single other person was visible to Devendra at that point. The tram came to a halt near the Sialda station. The sun had gone down and she had gotten up to leave and right behind her, maintaining his distance, Dave. He walked in air, smooth, brisk, his eyes fixed as if a tiger about to pounce at his prey. He kept his pace controlled and he tried to keep his breath normal. He needed to be as composed as possible. As they neared the station, Dave closed his distance, anticipating crowd and all of a sudden... Is that you? Devendra? Um, uh, um. Dev, you remember me, right? Goodness, you look so different. What happened? What have you been up to? Um, uh, Abhinath, right? I mean, been a long time. Abhinay, Dev. You don't look so well. Come join me for a cup of tea. Abhinay, yeah, um, uh, actually, I have to catch up with something. How about I contact you later and uh, I'll write to you. It's been four years, Dave, since I last met you. I even met your girlfriend back then. Uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, uh, the one from Assam? Madhu. Madhu Shmita. Yes. She was a sweet girl. Very nice. Uh, you guys still uh, together or are you still testing waters? Um, sh- she's in the market. Uh, she's in the market. Yeah, she's here on here. Oh, great. Uh, then you can meet my girl. Actually, my fiance, Debolina. Uh, hello. Ah, oh, speak of the devil. Dev, meet Debolina. Could this be true? Could this be the stars aligning to Devendra? All his disorientation, his confusion, all the whistling winds, storms and chaos had, had suddenly become silent. Abhinay went on and on introducing and trying to make conversation, but it was worthless to Devendra at that point. It was all worthless except her. His target, the woman from the tram, the woman with the pink ribbon, the red lipstick. This would be the first time he would interact with a prey, with a woman who was about to be 
the victim to one more of his crimes, to one more episode of violence. Dev? Devendra? Hi, uh, I'm Devendra. But you can call me Dev if you like. Nice to meet you. As I said before, I, mean, uh, um, I got to catch up with something. Uh, why don't you give me a card? It has been great to meet you, Dabolina. Have a great married life. I don't know what it was about that meeting. I don't know what was it about him meeting her and interacting with her. But something at that point changed the way Devendra looked at the world. Something at that point in time changed the chain of events that was in an ever continuum. He went home that night. Not to the building he was living in for the past two years, but his own home. He opened the door slowly, turned on one of the bulbs that still worked, took out one of his beeries and lighting the bud, he sat in reflection for a while. He stubbed the beery and got up to clean his home. His cupboard had two halves. One he put all his belongings to and in the other he put whatever he had of me. Then he sat on his desk. It felt like ages since I had a smile on my face. He sat and he wrote, November 2nd, 1976. I, Devendra Chatterjee, confess to the crimes I have committed in the name of love, in the name of fear, in the name of loneliness, sadness and confusion. It has been some time since I have been in my senses, actually years. And in these years I have been in search for a mark. The birthmark of my lover, my best friend, Madhushmita. Madhushmita, whose life I took with my own bare hands. Whose life I took by stabbing a knife into her bare skin over and over and over again. I don't seek forgiveness. I don't seek redemption, but I seek freedom. I seek freedom from this body that I find myself in. The crimes I've committed are, are crimes and sins against humanity, sins that must at no cost go unpunished. It is here at this point that I realize more than anything else how I am a monster. A monster that must have broken hearts, homes, relations and taken mothers from their children, children from their mothers. Broken love between lovers with a weapon called love in my own hands. I realize that I am a burden to society and I'm going to lift this burden tonight I apologize to all for my selfish deeds for all my mistakes it takes a lot to see someone slit his own throat especially someone who holds a large part of you in their palms someone you belong to I remember clearly how he walked from the desk to his dusty sofa. It had one person's blood till Devendra sat on it one last time that night. Today, the sofa has two. The Mark of Beauty, written and directed by Anuraj Barua. Voice actors Ragini Mathur as Madhushmita, Siddharth Dixit as Abhinay, Shromana Bhomek as Devolina, and Yash Truly as Devendra. Sound recordist Yash Govius, and we'd like to thank Mrs. Leli Dutta and Mr. Bhaskar Roy. Thank you, and keep listening to Whistles and Echoes Goo.